Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? It was, Jew. It was not a Christian. Any questions about Christianity before I go on to my next topic? Going once. He was a Jew. That's not a question, but thank you. Any questions? So is the Quran a book or is it what? So, the question is, is the Quran a book? The Muslims say that the Quran is a recitation. A recitation that we find in book form. Now it's interesting, ladies and gentlemen. What, what is it that you want me to... Bro. It's a book. It's a book. So, Muslims say that it is a recitation, but their own book calls it a book. So if we read the Quran, it says, recite what has been revealed to you from the book of your Lord. However, ladies and gentlemen, what is more important, what I want to talk about, is not whether we should follow the Quran, but whether we should follow Jesus Christ. Muslims say that the Quran is the word of God. Christians say that Jesus Christ is the word of God. Jesus Christ was a person born in history that we can tell stories about like we can tell stories about one another. And that means that those stories contain the message of Jesus Christ and that can be translated into any language and into any culture so that any people can follow Jesus Christ. By comparison, Muslims say that the Quran only exists in Arabic. And therefore, to follow the Quran, you must learn Arabic. Which means that the Muslims have placed Arabic culture above yours. Whatever your language is, whether it's Urdu, whether it's French, Spanish, Hindi, English, Urubai, Zulu, it doesn't matter what your language is, the God of Allah cannot speak to you. But the God of Yahweh, Christ, and the message of the Apostles is a message for all peoples. You can have that message in Zulu. You can have that message in Urubai. You can have that message in Urdu. You can have that message in Hindi. You can have that message in Arabic. You can have it in Greek. You can have it in Hebrew. You can have it in English. There is no cultural imperialism within the Christian faith. Any other questions that people want to ask about Christianity? Going once. Going twice. Okay. So the question is, what does it mean to say that Jesus is the Anointed One? To understand the answer to this question, you must understand that the Jewish texts for centuries before the birth of Jesus Christ kept speaking about a figure, a coming figure, a great king, a priest and a prophet. And it described this figure not just as a man, but as more than a man, as a God-man. And this figure is known within Judaism as the Messiah, the Messiah, as we say in English. When Christians, the first Jewish Christians, called Jesus the Messiah, they were saying that he was the fulfillment of those Jewish prophecies from centuries before, that he was that prophet like unto Moses, that he was that high priest, that he was that king, and that he was that God-man. That's what it means to call Jesus the Messiah. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Going once. Any questions going twice? Any questions going three times? 
Okay, thank you for listening. I'm going to go on to my next topic. I want to talk briefly about, ladies and gentlemen, the war that you're not being told about. The war that is happening between Azerbaijan and Armenia. Right now, the Western media have whipped up the West into a frenzy against Russia because of its illegal and criminal invasion of Ukraine. And we've been encouraged to boycott the gas and energy supplies of Russia to starve Russia of cash so that the Russian war machine cannot wage war against Ukraine. And rightly so. I agree. But the same European Union that is refusing to buy gas from Russia has bought gas from Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is illegally waging war against Armenia. They are doing to Armenia what Ukraine is suffering at the hands of Russia. And yet, the European Commission and your European leaders are willing to turn a blind eye to the criminal activities of Azerbaijan so that they can buy gas from Azerbaijan while sacrificing the lives of Armenians. This demonstrates to you, ladies and gentlemen, that the European Union is an unprincipled constitutional arrangement made up by politicians sitting on a gravy train pontificating about values that they don't put into practice when the victims are Christians and the criminals are Islamist terrorists. Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan is a terrorist state using in its militias Islamists who fought with ISIS and they are being supported by Turkey, a country that believes in re-establishing the Ottoman Empire and is speaking aggression to Greece, its orthodox neighbour and rival. Your Bible says, kill women and children, and infants even. Ladies and gentlemen, notice the silence. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how we see Muslims behave all the time. The moment you spotlight the criminal activity of some part of the Islamic community, the Muslims immediately try to change the subject. Do not buy into that lie. You must speak up for Armenian Christians. You must speak up for Greece against Turkish aggression. Turkey that sponsored and supported Islamist terrorists in Syria, that ethnically cleansed Christians in northern Cyprus, that continues to persecute Christians in Turkey. Ladies and gentlemen, we must stand in solidarity with Armenia and Greece against the aggressions of Azerbaijan and Turkey. And more to the point, ladies and gentlemen, if you are a Christian, you must stand united with your brothers and sisters around the world against Islamist aggression, even if the politicians don't want you to do that. Now, our Islamist apologists here wanted to mention Christians in Africa. So I will. Tens of thousands of Christians in northern Nigeria are being butchered 
by an Islamic Jihad that Western powers are ignoring. And I want to challenge them. Are they ignoring them because they are black? Are they ignoring them because they are poor? Or are they ignoring them because they are Christian? Christians in North Sudan and South Sudan suffered an Islamic Jihad for 18 years in which two million Christians were murdered and killed by Islamist jihadis and the West did not care to stop it. Why? Because they were black, because they were poor and because they were Christian. In other words, your socio-political and economic elites have rules and a hierarchy about whose lives are important. Black lives matter if they're in America. Black lives don't matter if they're in Nigeria. Black lives don't matter if they're in the Sudan. Black lives don't matter if they're in the Central African Republic where another Islamic Jihad is killing Christian Africans. Christians don't matter if they are the subject of Islamic aggression. NATO ignores the aggression and the West ignores the aggression of Turkey against Greece. Why? Because they want Turkey as a part of NATO. In other words, it's more important to be against Russia than it is to live by the principles that they claim to believe in. And I want to applaud you all for ignoring the hecklers. But notice who are the hecklers? Muslims, Muslims. And why are they heckling? Because I am drawing attention to Islamic aggression and to the crimes of Islamic populations against Christians. Ladies and gentlemen, do not fall into the trap of jumping through their hoops. You must speak up for Christians when the elites are silent. You must speak up for Christians when the politicians are silent. You must speak up for Christians even when jihadi apologists demand instead that you talk about what they want to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, any questions on the topic? Any questions going once? Sorry? Did black lives matter to Muhammad? Did black lives matter to Muhammad? Muhammad, who sold black slaves. Muhammad, who allowed his followers to sell black slaves. Muhammad, who sold two black slaves to free one Arab man. Muhammad, who said that the devil looked like a rusty black man. The devil looks like a black man, according to Muhammad. Muhammad, who gave a slave to his daughter. No, no, Muhammad didn't care about black lives. But Christ, let us look at Christ. Christ was not a white European, but he said, I have come to set the captive free. And who were the Old Testament captives of the passage in Isaiah that he quoted? They were slaves. They were slaves. And Christ said, I have come to set them free. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, for 2,000 years, Christians have fought against the slave trade whilst for 1400 years Muslims have practiced an Islamic slave trade. 
Any other questions on the topic? On the topic? Any questions about Christianity, ladies and gentlemen? Any questions? Go on, sir. How does the atonement, how do uh, Muslims address the whole issue of the atonement? So we're talking about Christianity. Have you got a question about Christianity? Well, I think this is a really good opportunity. To, to Sorry, what's the question about Christianity? Christians believe that... Uh, what's the question about Christianity? The question is... Well, then I'd have to say it's a question for Muslims, but for Christians... That's okay, so I'm looking for questions about Christianity. Any questions about Christianity, ladies and gentlemen? So, ladies and gentlemen, so, the question is, what is the atonement? Now, Muslims keep saying, why don't you Christians come and talk about Christianity? Here I am talking about Christianity, and we have one, two, three Muslims demand I embarrass their religion. So, what is Christian understanding of atonement and forgiveness? It is the idea, ladies and gentlemen, that God saves you. You cannot save yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, before the Holy God, your works are nothing. God is purely holy. If I had a glass of pure water and I introduced to that water a drop of mercury or a drop of acid, would that water still be pure? Not at all. Not one drop of your sin can enter into God's presence. But you cannot do anything else but sin. And so, because you cannot save yourselves, God has decided to rescue you. And how has he decided to rescue you? He has decided to rescue you by becoming a man himself, by taking to himself a humanity and to bring upon himself that judgment for your sin in his flesh so that his flesh might be consumed by death and that by being consumed by death he might conquer death in his flesh so that our flesh can rise with him and share in eternal life that is the gospel of our lord jesus christ the Quran is a fictional book full of lies and it lies about the Christian faith. The Quran believes that we believe in three gods, Christians, and he said, yeah, 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 Christians. Put your hand up if you believe in three gods. None of them. Christians, put your hand up if you believe in one God. There you go. The lies of the Quran have been exposed. This Quran lies about Christianity. This Quran thinks that the sun sets in a puddle of mud. Ladies and gentlemen, don't. Ladies and gentlemen, do you believe like the Quran that the sun sets in a puddle of mud? No. The Quran is wrong. The Quran says that the sun sets in a puddle of mud. Do you think I'm lying? Do you think I'm lying? He thinks I'm lying. So let me show you that I'm not lying. Let me show you that I'm not lying. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hand up if you believe that the Quran sets in a puddle of mud. Nobody. Put your hand up if you know that the Quran Sorry, the Bible does not set at all. It's just the world turning. Right. So now let me show you that all of you put your hand up. No more than the Quran. No more than the... Yes, two people No more than the Quran. So let's have a look. Let's have a look. Here's what the Quran says. Bear with us. 
the composite lawyer. The Quran is one book, one ilah, one God only. Don't say two, three, say one, only one. One. One God. One God. Allah is the Quran. 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 Allah Quran teaches that the sun sets in a puddle of mud. Let me just show you. This is a big lie. The get of England is a big lie. They need a baby. They need a baby. It's given a baby. And then big lie. It's a big lie. Now notice how they're scared of their own Quran. Notice how they want to change the subject. Read the Quran, no, Google, don't Google it. Jesus Google is rubbish. Don't go to Google. The Read the Quran itself. Right. So, it. ladies and gentlemen, yeah. let's so look at Surah 18. Guys, don't feed the trolls. They're just trying to distract you. That's the tactic. They are just trying to distract you. So, go open up your Qurans if you got one. Open up your Quran. We're going to. Surah 18. That's the way we need to go. Surah 18. Surah 18. I'll tell you in a second. I'll tell you in a second. So in Surah 18, ladies and gentlemen, Surah 18, don't feed the trolls. He said I was lying when I said the Quran sets in a puddle of mud. Let me show you I'm telling you the truth. Surah 18, I 85, until when he reached the setting of the sun, he found it setting in a spring of murky water. Put your hand up if you believe the sun sets in a spring of murky water. Put your hand up if you think the Quran got it wrong. There you go. The Quran got it wrong. So, that's what your Quran says. It doesn't. What does it say? Read it. Read it. Read it. Read it. Read it. Apparently, this is. Let me read it from that Quran. Let me read it from that Quran. No, 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 no. Ladies, it, may I? May I? May I? You see, it's because he knows it says the same. He knows it says the same. So, ladies and gentlemen, guys, don't feed the troll. Don't feed the troll, please. Don't feed the troll. Don't feed the troll. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just read it. So, I can hear you. Listen. Don't give the dogs what is the holy and don't to. Can you read it? Can you read it? Yes. I didn't even understand what you read. Try again. I'm not Try again. I'm Notice. He demands that I read I can the Quran. I can speak when I read the Quran and show you the Quran's got errors in it, he wants to talk about the Bible. I am happy to answer questions about the Christian faith. So, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, they are frightened of criticism of Islam. He calls me a racist. Why is he called me a racist? Did any of you hear anything racist from me? Not a single one of you. And why, ladies and gentlemen, does this Muslim play the race card? Because he's embarrassed by what I'm telling you. Ladies and gentlemen, you do not need to follow this lie, this book that is full of errors. You can simply follow Jesus Christ. And why should you follow Jesus Christ? Why should you follow Jesus Christ? Because Jesus Christ is the very vision of God. When you see Jesus, you see God on earth. You see what God looks like. You see how God behaves. You see what God wants you to behave as. 
And so I invite you to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. They want to get our own church. They never so, the white people. And they said Jesus left you. Are there any intelligent questions about Christianity? Opposed to these two trolls. Pastor, pastor, pastor. Uncle, could you take this conversation? Can you, yeah. So any questions about Christianity? Right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go a couple of yards this way. If you want to listen to me, come with me. If you want to listen to these ignorant people, stay here. So guys, so guys, have we got have we got any questions about the Christian faith? The one place where I can buy a black man today as a slave is in the Islamic world. Just think on that. Just think on that. You guys ignore the fact that the only still existent slave trade anywhere in the world of black people is happening in the Islamic world today. Not 300 years ago, but right now. I can go to the Islamic world and buy a black child as a slave. But what do they want to talk about? The slavery of 300 years ago. I'm not interested about hearing lectures from Muslims about slavery from 300 years ago when they justify slavery that's happening right now in the Islamic world. Thank you. You're absolutely right. You should applaud that. For too long, ladies and gentlemen, political correctness has prevented us from criticizing an ideology that deserves to be criticized. We have on camera, on so-called phones, people like him defending slavery. We have on camera people like him defending sex with children. We have on camera on Soko films people like him justifying religious apartheid against Christians. And your politicians tell you that we should not criticize Islam. Not only should we criticize Islam like we criticize Nazism and like we criticize fascism and like we criticize communism but as Christians we can offer something better we can offer a muscular Christian faith a real Christianity not the kind of Christianity that you see amongst the Church of England, but the kind of real Christianity that comes from being a disciple of Jesus and following Jesus in your ethics, in your beliefs, in your values, in your politics, in your economics. Ladies and gentlemen, ignore the trolls. They're just triggered. And the reason why they behave like this, ladies and gentlemen, is because as you can see, when I speak, people listen. But when they speak, nobody listens to them. And that's why they behave like this, ladies and gentlemen. Following Jesus Christ is the answer to the cancer of liberalism. Cancer of liberalism. Go on. Answer me one. Ask me one question. Just with one 